What are we doing today, Cass? The exhaust. We're just gonna be swapping out the stock exhaust for a slip-on RJWC. Uh, same brand Kyle got on his, but he's got the dual stacks all the way to the header. So uh, hoping to see a big difference there. I'm told it's gonna be pretty gnarly. Yeah, it's a mud edition. The same same uh, slip-on mud edition as uh, as my bike. And uh, we just recently installed the lift kit, which is in a separate video. Um, it was pretty much bolt-on, no issues. The tiger tail still fits quite nice. Um, we also upgraded the tires to the 30-inch sledgehammers on the 12-inch rims. So those worked out quite nicely. I finally look okay. I was worried about if we kept the stock 12 inch rim, if there was gonna be a lot of sidewall, but it turned out really nice. I'm happy with the look. Yeah, it looks like a little Tonka truck now. Yeah, yeah, so I'm really impressed with these so far. I like them. I've only taken it around the yard, so we'll see, but I don't foresee having any problems. We're hoping to get all this done and go for a ride. Um, one last thing about the tires. Because we did the snorkel kit and the rad relocate, um, the snorkel tubes, are routed in the front fender here so initially there was some rub Kyle re kind of positioned everything yeah and uh, so there's no rub right now but if the suspension comes under any kind of pressure it would potentially rub so we're just gonna stiffen yeah, up the front suspension kind of see a shiny spot here when I was doing a little bit of testing and that's where the tire hit the bottom of the snorkel pipe so we're gonna crank up the suspension a little bit and see if we can do something about that um, otherwise, I have a few other ideas as to what I could do, but for now, we're going to see if that works out. But so far, so good. I mean... So now you have your snorkels, your rad relocate, big old mud tires. You'll have your pipe in tune. We have a clutch kit coming and, and a few lift. other little things. Oh, yeah, and the lift. And a tiger tail. So... LEDs if you really want to get into it. Yeah. So, I mean... Uh, it's really coming together now. I like to call it mini me yeah. or the, the Kodiak that could, but now it's kind of like the Kodiak that can. And uh, we're done phase one on this bike, so it's all ready to go. But I'm looking at selling those rims and getting different rims so I can get rid of the spacers and a few other awesome things in the future. But uh, yeah. uh, so we're, we're off to the races. So for today, <coughs> Cass got this little gem and uh, it should be pretty quick to do but uh, we'll get a sound comparison of the stock boring pipe and then put this guy on and you'll hear the mono piston roar <laughs> <laughs> it'll be cool man start by removing some plastics I guess because I think where we're starting oh yeah I put the fan wire reachable in here Everything is still removable. And then we gotta take this guy off. Cass is toilet paper. Never go without number one. Uh, some Phillips. Oh, insurance. That's good. Always have insurance. And uh, yeah, four Phillips. There's like four 10 mil bolts, and we gotta take off this whole top piece of plastic. And uh, then we should have access to a flange somewhere here where the slip-on goes on. I never really paid attention when we were rebuilding a bunch of stuff on this bike, but that's next. Four of these, and then four 10 mil. I think there's, I think that should be it. And then there's the rest is just little pop tabs and things like that.
Tak aj. Exhaust, but it's about to be better. Oh yeah, now I remember. There's two pop tabs here, and then this top piece comes off, and then we can get the bottom pieces. Even like pop tabs, Yamaha does a better job with these little pop tabs. I love Yamaha for that. They're so easy to work on. All right. Well, that looks like I learned something. You can see all of our fine snorkel work in there. We should double check that while we're here, I guess, eh? Oh, he didn't undo that one. And then over here somewhere. This is the pipe we're looking for. Okay, so we have band clamps, one bolt on top, that's a 12 mil. These band camps are clamps are seven mil. There's a bunch of Phillips heads for all these little heat shields. And then there's uh, six mil Allens and more Phillips and like all these heat shields and stuff have to come off because right here is where all the spring tensioners hold onto the flanges. So we're going to remove all this and then we'll be uh, open to what we're taking off and on. So um, we're just going to, I pre-lubed them a little bit and broke them just to make sure I had everything right. And then uh, you'll see the actual old muffler get pulled off and we'll start digging into the RJWC and then find uh, the injector and put the tuner in. So we have some of the heat shields removed and it doesn't look like I have to take all of them off because the spring, the upper spring and the lower spring are right here. I just put a string behind that, pull on them, <coughs> take these springs off and then I just have to undo that bolt on the top, the 12 mil, and this whole thing should come off. So uh, I think I'll just go ahead and try that. If not, I'll pull off more of these uh, heat shields. But yeah, it's quite the complicated heat shield they put on this thing. Well, not complicated, just a little excessive, I guess. But uh, yeah, we'll pull that off and uh, should be able to slip on the uh, RGWC pretty quick. So that was it, just the two springs and then the uh, 12 mil up top and the whole thing is off on the ground. So uh, try not to get a little too ahead of yourself like I did, but uh, luckily I was smart enough not to take off the whole thing. But now we just have to meet up the new flange with the new pipe and it was good. A little trick with these springs, if you don't have any experience with them, what I like to do is just grab some good like 550 or you know strong string or something like that. And I just put it behind the hook and I pull with the string. I find it a lot easier and safer just Wear some safety gear for that. I like to have some gl uh, glasses on just because uh, I've seen these go astray and they can be quite dangerous. There's a lot of springinicity in these guys. So uh, now it's just a matter of slipping this guy on and the tuner. And we'll have uh, a mono piston barking as loud as it can. <laughs> as, as loud as it can. Yeah. My supervisor, look at her. Hard at work. So before I get the pipe on, and this is gonna be really hard to show you, basically, when we're doing the tuner, we need to interrupt the fuel injector signal, and it's actually underneath the storage box, which wouldn't be a big deal if I didn't go ahead and put a gigantic amount of snorkel pipes and silicone all through this. So I can do it by hand, it looks like, but it is 
way in the back, there's a gray clip. You can kind of see the base of it back there, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you by camera. But anyway, I'm going to unclip that, interrupt the signal, and uh, we'll have the fuel tuner done. I'm hoping I can do it from the side here instead of removing all of my snorkel work. And uh, we're going to try and do that first, and then uh, we're going to look at removing some heat shields off that, putting it on the other one, and then uh, bolting that up. That'll take not long at all, but I just want to get the hard part done. So you'll see above the throttle body and everything, the injectors at the top. So if you don't have snorkels, just remove this box, and it's literally sitting right underneath it, straight up, really easy. Getting this box off, I think, is like two bolts, and then the back just sits in a grommet. Oh, well, there's one bolt back there. So uh, for people who don't have snorkels, much easier job for you. Uh, but I'm going to stick my mitts in there and see if I can unclip it. So I've got everything hooked up under there. So the, uh, the actual tuner, all it is, is interrupting the signal to the injector and then supplying its own information for fuel. So it's plugged into the injector and then plugged into the old lead that controlled it. Now, I got it all from underneath. I found this tool to be helpful. You can get it with your hands, but mine are a little bit too big to get in there. Um, but I use this just to, to close the clamp and pull it up. So you can get it without removing this box if you do have snorkels like we do. Um, it wasn't all that bad. And we're now going to find a spot for this inside the battery tray in the front and hook up the uh, negative lead here to the terminal on the battery. Um, and then uh, we're good to go that way and then move on with the pipe. Shiny. So we got everything hooked up and uh, off camera we gave it a shot and I gotta say it's awesome. So I just, uh, I got it all clamped in and new springs and the whole bit. This has got to be the easiest thing I've ever done. And uh, there's that gorgeous RJWC billet and stainless steel pipe. Just gotta, it's all much more simple and slick there's actually a lot of room here compared to the stock one and uh, they obviously put a little extension pipe on the end so that it's uh, away from the bike so uh, they know what they're doing they know what they're talking about I keep going with RJWC just because I mean their worksmanship is just through the roof so super happy with this uh, we're just gonna button some stuff up make sure uh, she's got the right amount of fuel put everything together and we'll do the uh, comparison. So, awesome. That was honestly with video and taking my time and you know, Cass and I chit chatting and letting the dogs out. That was super easy, super short, took no time at all. So, so far, first impressions, highly recommend it. What do you think? Highly recommend highly it. Highly <laughs> recommend it.